Welcome everybody. Jim Lee from Resonated.com, ClimateViewer.com, and Resonated.net here to talk about some weather modification and climate engineering. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, geoengineering projects. If you come over here to Resonated.com slash WXMod and click on the geoengineering projects link, you'll see some pretty graphics. Um, what is geoengineering? Uh, scientists uh, have decided that they can use technology to save us from global warming and they've come up with various methods to do it. I'm going to talk about a couple real quick. Um, there's some pretty graphics here. Do a little research. It's all there. In the next section you will see stratospheric aerosol delivery costs. Um, these are various studies to figure out how much it would cost to put a blanket of reflective material into the sky to reflect the sun's incoming radiation away to mimic the actions of the Mount Pinatubo volcano which cooled the planet by a certain amount. <laughs> so uh, they think that they can uh, Put some stuff up there themselves and basically cool the planet down like the volcano did. And there's the cost. Uh, World of Geoengineering from the Etcetera Group, 151 pages of geoengineering projects. Those are also available at climateviewer.com. You just come over here and click on the Climate Viewer 3D. You're going to see it load up a map. And on that will be dots. Click the dots. Click the little icon and you can see algae schemes. You can see ocean fertilization. Now these icons aren't exactly in the right spot. They're by country. I'll clean that up in the future, but I've already got those up on the map. Check them out. So you can also check out a PDF version of that, which is um, an Excel sheet. It shows all 151 pages of scientific experimentation in the world of geoengineering. On to Mr. Bill Gates. Mr. Bill Gates is interested in her modifying hurricanes. Um, some of his partners, Ken Caldera, Mr. Uh, John Latham from the Silver Lining Project, Mr. Stephen Salter from the Silver Lining Project, um, and a couple other guys have came up with a system to protect you from hurricanes, operate storm suppression equipment, tell somebody that a storm is coming, tell them how much it's going to cost them if they don't get protection, receive payment for protection, receive a re formal request, and get their storm protection. Pretty crazy times, guys. Um, interestingly enough, I have an American Meteorological Society video called Reducing Hurricane Intensity Using Arrays of Atmotion Inc.'s Wave-Driven Upwelling Pumps. This is describing the exact same process that is described in these patents. So what you have is uh, flotation devices in the Gulf of Mexico. They have huge straws that go down to the bottom of the ocean. They suck cold water. They put it on the surface. It cools off the surface of the ocean, which should lower the intensity of a hurricane. Should. What I'm interested to see is, will they actually be steering these hurricanes? And if Bob pays to not have it hit his oil refinery, does Tom have to take one in the face? We shall see. Mr. Bill Gates also came up with the Fund for Innovative Climate and Energy Research, Pfizer. This is a trust fund for research in the world of geoengineering. Um, Mr. Bill Gates also said that he would not fund experiments himself. You, um, these scientists will have to rely on public funds to uh, actually make their experiments happen. Which brings us to our first project, the Silver Lining Project. Um, this website has been deleted, but I found it over on archive.org. Come over here. This will bring up uh, deleted websites. And uh, there you go. Research objectives. The research is currently undertaken by the distinguished scientists at the in and engineers at Manchester University, Leeds University, NCAR, Pacific Northwest National Labs, Purdue University, University of Washington, Washington, and the University of Edinburgh. Um, so all of these guys are coming together to figure out how to put some boats out in the ocean to suck up uh, water, vapor, and put it into the clouds uh, to brighten them uh, using, I guess, uh, water vapor and sea salt. Um, Stephen Salter talks about the pros and cons of silver lining method here. Interesting little Google forum. You can watch myself and uh, Mr. Steven Salter go a couple rounds. Uh, my latest comment has not been posted yet, so 
you're seeing it in this video. But um, Mr. Stephen Salter uh, says that uh, what they're doing actually, in fact, is not weather modification. We do not want to make dramatic reductions to the temperature of the planet. We want to stop dramatic increases. Now, he's referring to a comment that I had made um, up here that the American Meteorological Society, the World Meteorological Organization, and the National Research Council all um, pretty much all agree that weather modification is an unproven science. Now, more specifically, one stated, weather modification technologies that claim to achieve such large scale or dramatic effects do not have a sound scientific basis, e.g. hail cannons, ionization methods, I would insert comma geoengineering, and should be treated with suspicion. He did not specifically address that. He tries to, but instead he just refers to the work of Sean Twomey or some other dude. Um, yeah, I'm sure his work's great, but you never answered my question. So I digress. Mr. Stephen Salter is a member of the Silver Lining Project and also a signer of the patent for the storm suppression equipment. I believe that's weather modification. So, billionaire Bill Gates chunks cash at climate cooling cloud creator. That's a mouthful. And you have two videos here. Just click here and you can hear all about it. Just sit back and let them explain it to you. On to the next project. The Haida Salmon Restoration Project. This is the iron fertilization bloom that everybody's talking about. The rogue geoengineer just took it upon himself to go try it out. So what he did is he took a boat and he dumped a whole bunch of iron in the ocean. I favorited a video on YouTube. Rogue geoengineer dumps 100 tons of iron into the ocean. And they tweeted back to me, if you're interested in the project, learn the facts here. Well, I went there. Links are up here. You can check them out. Hi to Salmon. Check out everything they did. And they're, they're pretty upfront about everything they're doing. Um, the guy the, himself, he's come out and spoke. Pacific Ocean Hacker Speaks Out. Um, all the links are there. Our first international water geoengineering experiment goes badly in the public eye apparently uh the strato shield hose in the sky this is from intellectual adventures lab um just heard about this i mean i literally only have the links from their website on this and a video so check that out what they're talking about doing is putting a a hose directly into the sky using balloons and they're going to pump it straight up there and what they're going to pump is probably sulfuric acid. Um, they want to put a layer of sulfur up there for solar radiation management. So they're going to spray chemicals to blanket the sky and reflect away our good sunlight. Next project, stratospheric particle injection for climate engineering spice. Um, this one's kind of on hold. Same idea. You got a hose going up the sky with a balloon spraying junk, pretending to be a volcano. Um, this one met the Insetter group, <laughs> and uh, God love them, they uh, gave them a good shellacking, and a political backlash to geoengineering begins. More links on that, but as far as I know it, this one's either on hold permanently or canceled, so good deal on that one. Um, I'm firmly against SRM, <laughs> demonstrating the SPICE project and naked engineering there. Check those videos out. Just click these buttons to expand them. And that brings us to David Keith. No, oh, David Keith, I can't wait to talk to you one day. Um, David Keith, Geoengineering the Planet, TED Talk, video link here. Click here, you can watch it right here on the page. Um, yeah, he's really upfront. God love him. He believes in what he believes, and he is not afraid to talk about it. Um, <laughs> and uh, y you know, 
I'm out of lunch on him. I'd really like to speak with him before I, I pass judgment on him. But here's We Are Change, Calgary meets David Keith. You should watch it. I mean, the guy seems like he really is open for a discussion, and I think that that's really what's key um, to this whole issue is that I don't feel like in, in many of the major decisions that have been made, um, you know, we the people had much of a say in it. And uh, I really think everybody should be involved in this discussion because it affects everybody. So, um Here's his uh, video. Um, I also put an article up about um, him in, in particular because he's going to be spraying uh, in Arizona in 2013. If you click right here, you can go over to my blog and check out an article about that. And it has all the details on the where's and why fours. There you go. Mr. Bill Gates with his money. Keith's experiment to use tethered balloons similar to an intellectual venture strato shield. Bill Gates back climate scientists lobbying for large scale geoengineering. So um, he's going to do a test, an open air test in 2013. I'm going to need to get more information on this. If anybody has any information on it, please forward it over to me. My email is at the bottom of every page right here. Comments, you mad, you jelly, email me. And then finally, at the bottom of the page, probably most important, um, you've got the testimony that was given at Congress. Now, the rest of these videos are over on the law page of um, this, this website. But what happened was in 2010, they held public hearings. There were three at the U.S. House of Representatives and one in the U.K., where they discuss the pros and cons of geoengineering. Um, there are many different, very large, well-funded websites that are trying to figure out any possible way that they can make this happen. Um, they've got legal hurdle, hurdles such as the Convention for Biological Diversity and, you know, the don't dump in the ocean laws and, you know, in mod and there's all kinds of, um, you know, transcontinental boundary uh, rules that say, you know, if you modify the weather over here and it flo you know, floats over my country, you're in trouble. So, um, you know, they're trying to figure out what they can do to, you know, <laughs> save us from geo from global warming with their science so it, you know we all need to be involved in this and it really starts with us cleaning up individually but that's another talk for another day my concern right now is that we ensure that you know as many people with bright minds are involved in this discussion and not just the people who stand to benefit from passage of laws that are going to guarantee that this happens from now on. Um, this is a ball that once it starts rolling will definitely end with fully controlled weather. Um, it's been a long process. They've been trying to control the weather for 150 years and they are very, very close to being able to do it. Get people involved. Talk about it. Talk with your parents. Talk with people. You know, let them know that this is something important and matters. And uh, keep the fight alive, guys.